The Atlanta Falcons are done with the QB carousel. They don't care what you have to say about Kirk Cousins and what happens after 12 o'clock games. They don't care how old he is. They want consistency. They want comfortability. And that is what Kirk Cousins will give them, assuming he doesn't get hurt again. Of course, the Atlanta Falcons, they uh, made a big splash with signing Kirk Cousins to a massive contract. A lot of people wanted to call him overpaid. I don't really see how he's overpaid in the slightest, but sure, I guess in the world of casuals that think that rings are the only thing that measures how good a player is, wouldn't have Dan Marino in their all-time list of top 10 quarterbacks. Sure, you're right. If that's that's what you think in the back of your head, you're absolutely right. But Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. The Falcons got our quarterback. They, they, they got their quarterback. I don't know what else to tell you. Look at the rest of the squad. Plenty of weapons. Kyle Pitts didn't give up number eight. Don't know if, you know, Kirk really pushed for it or not, but looks like Kyle Pitts going to have another bad season. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. But Kyle Pitts, the talent is there. Can they put it together with him? Can he have that rookie year and then some? I don't know. But Drake London, you know, your wide receiver one. There's no question there. Wide receiver two and three, though, very weird because it's a team that usually does kind of go with their height. And obviously Mooney and Moore, specifically Moore, are definitely on the shorter side. But more importantly, you're going for two names, specifically Mooney, that had a really down year. And I guess maybe you're thinking you get those elite, you know, I would say Kirk Cousins is is basically an elite quarterback. When he's on, he's on. But you get a very good quarterback. Maybe you, you know, see some resurgence. I don't know if that's their plan, but I could easily see them if there's a, you know, uh, a neighbors at eight going wide receiver. I could still see wide receiver being a need for them. I don't really have a whole lot of trust in Moore and uh, Mooney. I'm going to be honest with you. Mooney has that potential, but that was a really bad year last year, specifically considering you were supposedly getting all this help from DJ Moore. You know, I don't know if Fields was just locking in on DJ Moore more because it's easier to read your number one wide receiver that's elite getting open 24 7, but a down year after gaining an elite talent is definitely a red flag, in my opinion. Uh, it's pretty, pretty clear opinion. Uh, offensive line, this is kind of like a, an under the radar squad. You got two really good tackles. You've got a really good right guard, and then you've got some other, you know, left guard centers. Okay, it's not bad. This is a pretty good offensive line overall. I, I don't think it's as good as Minnesota's because they really have built up a line, especially when you look at the tackles. Their tackles are like maybe the best duo in the league. But it's still a very good offensive line, maybe more complete. Um, but offense should not be a problem for the Falcons. It really shouldn't. Their run game last year was pretty good. Their pass game wasn't even that bad. And it should be one of the top 10 offenses going into this next season. But then you look at defense. I don't know how pick eight, if it's not wide receiver, isn't edge. Edge has been a problem here forever. I always bring up the name, but it really does feel like, unless I'm forgetting a name, their, their best edge rusher was Vic Beasley for that one season he was really good. Like, one season. Um, maybe you have some potential on the squad, but they need edge. They do. And I will say, it's a little weird to see names like Kevin King and Eddie Goldman returning after missing two seasons, but the Falcons know something we don't. They know something we don't. Anya Mata was great. Jesse Bates was great. AJ Terrell is AJ Terrell. And then Grady Jarrett. I gotta say, I gotta admit, Honestly, he hasn't really been great since COVID. Obviously, we don't know much about last year because he was injured, but, like, bring back COVID just for Grady Jarrett to be good? I mean, I think it's a fair trade-off for humanity, right? <laughs> Clearly. Uh, but, of course, looking at the rest of the corners, Clark Phillips, uh, D. Alford. You maybe want to replace, you know, one of them, but I think we're going to probably try to let Phillips develop here. But, yeah, edge, it's a problem. Inside linebacker, you know... Basically, any former Falcon is doing pretty well for themselves right now with uh, Aluicon and uh, Devontre, but current Falcons uh, off-ball, not the best. Meta 24, now FC, now Fortnite, now Texas, now Fortnite, now FC, now 24, now. And as far as some other players, I think I'm missing Antonio Hamilton, maybe a couple of linemen, and Ray Ray McLeod. I can't afford them right now. We're negative 16 mil. I don't know what is different from real life to game, but I looked around. I didn't really see it. I really didn't see it. I don't know if just there's a higher cap number in real life than in game. I know the Falcons are kind of against it in real life, but right now our cap space is negative two when you factor in the rookie reserve and all that. So I can't afford them, which I don't really mind because I don't really need them. 
But it's still, I, I just can't afford them, even though I would like to have the realistic team on the field. But it is what it is. We're headed on to the draft. This team has options, obviously, which team doesn't. But Edge would probably be my number one. But if you have a, a you know, a Neighbors and Odunze there, which, I mean, there's a chance both are there. Not the greatest chance, but there's a chance that both are there. Do you really pass on them? I don't know. I'm not really sure. But here it is, the draft. Uh, as long as the first three picks are QB, I'm chilling because that's that's just what it needs to be. Every other pick, I think, is questionable, but QB for the first three is basically guaranteed. This pick, though, I've been seeing Dallas Turner a lot, uh, but when I remember to remove the wide receivers that they shouldn't have, there's like, I think they usually have like Odell and some other dude. Sometimes they take a uh, wide receiver, so we're praying that's the case. We want Dallas Turner... If Dallas Turner isn't there, though, do we trade back to 16 land like Verse or Latu, perhaps? I'm not sure. Edge is without a doubt, though, my number one on the mind. Let's take a look what they take. Joe Alts. Okay, I mean, they need line, but if I'm Kyler Murray and this pick is either not Marvin Harrison Jr. or a trade back, I'm requesting a trade back to a different team. I don't know. But the Chargers, they go with a tackle as well. The Giants, they go with a, a tackle as well. And then Dallas Turner goes uh, one pick in front of us to the Titans. Of course he does. Marvin Harrison Jr. is there at pick eight. And there's going to be so many people saying, Just take Marvin. Just take how the, the draft class falls. Oh my god. I would have taken Neighbors or Odunze, but Marvin Harrison. This team needs edge. It really does. Latu, Verse, I would take either one of these. But, man, wide receiver, huh? See, the problem with this is, while the Falcons could take wide receiver in real life, I do want to see if Mooney and or Rondale Moore can get the job done as, you know, they added those names. If I take a wide receiver here, they're basically irrelevant. They're basically useless. I genuinely can't believe, though, that that's what happened. We also have tackle, we have corner, Man, I don't know what to do, because this team does need quite a bit. Wide receiver's still there. Do I not trade back? Take Odunze at, like, 16 or something? And the Colts give us 43 to move up from 15. I am absolutely fine with that decision. But then I realized that it was on very easy, because I forgot to change it, so we have to add a fourth-round pick when I redo it. But, hey, I don't care if I add that, that fourth-round pick. I want that extra second 15 still lands a something, right? There should still be a, a corner, uh, an edge, a wide receiver, somebody. This would definitely be for Marvin Harrison. And guess what I get to see? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I get to see. Nothing. Brock Bowers. That is not a bad trade-up. It's unlikely that the Bears would take Bowers. However, the thing is, would the Bears trade down? There's been a lot of talks about, should they trade down? But if wide receiver is there and that's what they're dead set on, they don't trade down. Jets, there's a good chance that Bowers is their guy. So eight would be the most likely spot for the Colts to go up and get that tight end in Brock Bowers. So that's a pretty cool trade up. I like that. Marvin Harrison, once again, to the Bears, I don't like it. But the Jets going with corner is kind of crazy. And Byron Murphy, we've been seeing him go to the Vikings a lot lately. There's no way we have a chance at Verse or Latu, right? We have our choice. I'm going to go Jared Verse, I think. Been seeing his name uh, linked quite a bit. I'm going to go with who's more athletic. I also have neighbors there, but I don't know if he's there at 15. But more importantly, I want the edge anyways. Latu, 22 years old, very talented versus Jared Verse, who's also 22. Who's faster? Jared Verse, 4.63 with greats versus Latu, who is 4.56 with greats. Then you also have Chop Robinson. This is tough. This is like genuinely a tough decision between Latu with the injury concerns verse or the elite athlete in Chop Robinson. I mean, you can't go wrong with all three. Latu. Hmm. I don't know. It seems like everyone's been saying Jared verse to the, the Falcons. So do we do Jared verse? I'm going to go Latu. I'm doing it. Latu is my guy. 85 speed, 88 Excel, hidden development trade, 6'5, 265. Uh, that's my guy. I don't know what else to tell you. Chop Robinson directly after. You actually do see that with the Seahawks a lot. We could still trade up. Wide receiver's an option still. Pick 21 for Odunze. I just don't see it. I, the Dolphins get him, but I just don't see him being there. And I want him to be there, but he just won't be. I was going to trade up, but I was like, you know what? There's talent all over the place. I'm just going to grab someone to pick nine. Whoever's there. Whoever's there is there, really. 
Uh, cornerback, uh, Rake Straw is still there, which is a little interesting. Safety is an option. What else do we have for edge? Peyton Willis. Off ball would not be the worst decision. Junior Colson is still there. I know this isn't the best off ball class in the world, but Junior Colson could be the option. Zach Frazier could be the option at center. Don't even know if he's hidden in this class or not, but uh, I might go with him. Wide receiver is an option. You got a couple of speedsters in there. Kind of want Brendan Rice. Like I said, the main thing for me in this rebuild is I kind of want to test out the new names, like the wide receivers they added. So I think I'm going to go Junior Colson, a guy that I almost never draft, but I think he's going to be a good pick for us. Normal dev. I, I don't hate it. Maybe a little high, but, uh, you know, the options aren't the best. And then a 20 or a pick 11 in the second round, not 21. I'm really still debating wide receiver, man. I really am. And you know what? I am going to go with Peyton Willis uh, Wilson here. I don't know why Peyton Willis came into my head. Uh, but Peyton Wilson, I think, uh, super athlete, and we need all the off-ball we can get. Ridiculous speed, you know, fits the Troy Anderson mold. But this team's off-ball linebacker situation is not the best. It really is not the best. We're now moving on to the eighth pick in the third round. We have 15 as well because of the uh, Calvin Ridley trade, I believe. Uh, any other options? So we need wide receivers still, kind of. I kind of want Brendan Rice. I've never been able to, like, draft and develop him. O-line is kind of a problem, but I don't know if there's going to be anyone here. Zach Zinter, I don't even remember ever taking him, but I don't know what his dev is. Um, D-line, definitely doorless going future-wise. Could be a thing. What about corners? Phillips. Do we really want two Phillips on the same squad? I don't think that's really a, a good reason to go or not to go for a player, though. So I don't know if that's going to be the option. Vaki. Do have some safety to maybe take a 15. So I'm thinking this is either cornerback or wide receiver. Because honestly, this offensive line is really good. You know, the center is great even. I don't know why I didn't really mention Dolman. I kind of just, it just slipped me left guard, you know. We'll see. But I don't know what to do here. Because corner, I mean, do I go with two Phillips? Screw it, we're going to go, uh, who do I go with here? Screw it, we're going Andrew Phillips. Normal dev, 93 speed, 93 excel, 96 jumping. We got two Phillips. That'll help uh, the dynamic a little bit between those two young corners, I suppose. Having the same name. Yeah, it goes a long way. Trust me. It goes a long way. No fourth-round pick, which is a little bit of an L because that means I can't get Rice. But we got Beans. Uh, safeties, Bullard, Smith, Simpson, Taylor, and Vaki, basically. Uh, do we go Vaki? Or do we go with Bullard? Bullard looks pretty good, too. Javon Bullard. I think both are normal dev anyways. I'm going to go with slightly more athletic Javon Bullard. The, I would assume, new starting strong safety is Richie Grant's ceiling isn't as good. Uh, let's go to the fifth round. And honestly, at this point, I'm going to take whatever wide receiver is there. I don't really care when they're projected to go. And Rice is a mid-fourth. I really don't care. I mean, I took a bunch of players that were like 20, 30 spots early. So me taking someone that's, uh, you know, there a whole maybe round after they're supposed to be. It makes up for it, all right? It makes up for it. And we've had a Wingo a few times. He's another fourth rounder, and we're in the sixth. It is what it is. He's normal dev. I don't care. Yo, know, once you get into the fourth round projections or later, it's now it's starting to become like, okay, maybe you don't know when they're going to go. They're, maybe they go really early. Maybe they go really late. And then we're going fin to finish this off with another safety in Trey Taylor. And once again, it's very unlikely that, oh, wow, we're negative 30 mil in the hole now. It's very unlikely that, you know, really many teams would go with, uh, wow, Latu's a 77 overall, would go a whole draft without grabbing some sort of lineman. But once again, this is a user-created uh, class, is Bengals class, and there's not a whole lot of hidden development trade linemen. And I will say the Falcons are one of those teams that really could get away without drafting someone. They are actually pretty damn set on the offensive line front. Uh, but Latu, the 77 overall. Of course, he will be dropping in overall in a second. Really good finesse and power move. Really good. Uh, injuries 90, so we'll, we'll take that. But um, yeah, our new, I think, is it left out? Uh, he's going to start somewhere. What's the dev? He is a superstar. Okay. I don't know what Jared versus Chop Robinson uh, is, but... That is a good draft pick. Junior Colson, even though he's normal def, 74 overall, you know, this is the type of guy that you would draft on the second and third round of a user class or of a CPU class, and you might still get normal, but what you're definitely not going to get is 82 block shed. So not a bad selection there either. Peyton Wilson going to be the middle linebacker. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Peyton Willis, even though it's like Patrick, <laughs> it's Peyton Hillis. I don't know why that's throwing me off, but um, yeah, Wilson, amazing, super speedy. Debating on how Colson 
you know, devs up. Could be our two linebackers for the rest of this thing, assuming we stick it out in that 3-4. Um, I'm chilling. I'm all right with that. Uh, Phillips, 73 overall. Will he start? He'll be the number three, probably. I don't know. If you're not going to get, like, a bona fide, like, starter say, uh, corner, this team probably doesn't need to draft in the first round uh, or even the second round, realistically. But, obviously, it's all risk. You never know what kind of player you're going to get anyways. Uh, and then Rice is a 70 overall. Could be a starter at some point. Only... 22 years old, so you've got time to develop him. Uh, a bigger body, he's like also fast though. You know, Drake London's like basically only size. Uh, and then Wingo's kind of depth for the D line. I think we did all right. Maybe you could argue instead of Colson could win someone else. And going for Wilson and Colson that high in the second round is is definitely something. But the trade, oh, he actually went up in overall by the way. But the the trade down added us that extra off ball, and it's debatably the weakest position on this team going forward outside of edge. So. I think we did a pretty good job addressing defense where the Falcons in real life, for the most part, have been doing nothing but offense in the first round. But make no mistake, if Dallas Turner was there at eight, I would have taken him. I would have taken him. So realistically, this one was basically neighbors or trade down because once again, Marvin Harrison's not there at eight. People can argue until they're blue in the face. Just play it how it lies. For the most part, I will, but not when it's that unrealistic. All right, when it's that unrealistic, no. I'm sorry, but I will not. But once again, I still don't know where all our money is. Like, is there somebody on this squad that I'm forgetting about that got, like, a pay cut or maybe they're being paid too much? Like, I don't see it. I just think we're missing money. Like, what are the penalties? Okay, that is a lot of money. Maybe maybe this team is closer the, against the wall than I thought. Maybe the onyamata has gone. I don't know why they would do that, but I'm just trying to figure out why we're so broke. Like, I legitimately can't even sign free agents. The year one team. We're going to end up regretting not going wide receiver. But the problem is, like I said, I wanted to roll with the guys that they went for in real life. Maybe they aren't even planning on being the number two or the number three. Maybe they're just, like, interchangeable slot wide receivers, and they've wanted to go with neighbors or Adunze at eight for a long, long time. But I wanted to see what it would be like with Mooney uh, cooking and Rondale cooking. So I allowed it to happen. We're going to see what happens. Uh, looking at the offensive line, didn't change it one bit because it doesn't need to be changed. It's a damn good offensive line, top 10 in the league, especially at run blocking. Uh, quarterback, Kirk Cousins, he's good. Running back, Bijan, he's good. Kyle Pitts, best tight end in the game. Uh, defensively, this is where a lot of things have changed, obviously. We added two off balls. We added a pass rusher. We added a brand new strong safety and a number three cornerback that has the same name as the number two corner. D-line, obviously they added Eddie Goldman, Kevin King at cornerback. I mean, don't start him. I, I, As a Packers fan, I don't hold a lot of heat in my heart, but he is on the Mount Rushmore of sad. Him and Brandon Bostic are holding hands on the Mount Rushmore of sad. And the problem is, Brandon Bostic probably deserves less of that, of that, that shared uh, blame. Obviously not the same year or anything like that, but as far as like, you know, who do you hate is the most as, the Packer, as a Packers fan... You know, Brandon Bostic made one singular mistake, and, you know, it did suck, and it was huge, and it physically cost the Green Bay the Super Bowl, but Kevin King got torched all day against the Buccaneers, gave up just so many touchdowns. He just, you know, it wasn't one mistake. It was all damn game, you know? One mistake can happen, but being burned all game long, I don't care if he was quote-unquote playing injured. Well, just don't play then. I don't know, dude. Coaching staff should have sat him anyways, but what a disaster. Maybe he'll come back stronger than ever and he'll just be a goon for the uh, Falcons, but man, I am not a very fond person of him right now. And by right now, I mean many years ago. And by many years ago, I mean only a few years ago. Also, let me know in the comment section below what team you'd like to see rebuilt next. Obviously, we are very, very close to the NFL draft, and once that happens, you know, whatever team lands players that we haven't done a rebuild for, you know, if pick two is Jaden Daniels or pick one Jaden Daniels, whatever it may be. I mean, it's definitely Caleb Williams, but, uh, you know, we'll do a rebuild for those teams. But until then, we can do more speculatory uh, slash uh, updated free agents uh, move rebuilds, you know, still have the Texans. I was going to do the Texans here. And then I was like, yes, Stefan Diggs is him, but is it really worth doing another rebuild that I just did? Nice, Clark Phillips, you goon. Another rebuild. When I just did one with, uh, you know, Daniil Hunter and Joe Mixon, maybe. So we'll see. And it was the highest voted one. But uh, 
Yeah, let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, maybe leave a like if you're enjoying the video so far. Maybe subscribe if you're new. Do a ton of franchise stuff. And if you're not new, do appreciate good support on the channel. Follow me, Twitter, Jumpicare. Second channel, Picare Plays for Nomadic Content, which hopefully will resume at some point. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's hopefully see a new team win a Super Bowl. The Falcons, not a team that I see win the Super Bowl very often. And I also still have no idea what I want to do with uh, Kirk Cousins, because he's old, but... Did they really sign a four-year contract for their player to retire the following season? I, I don't feel like that's the case. I think you're expecting minimum two, potentially all four. All right, so we have $32 million, and we have to somehow spread that out to get A.J. Terrell and Kyle Pitts back, plus Drew Dahlman, uh, who in real life is definitely not a player you want to lose. Not really sure how that's going to happen, but obviously I need to at least keep Pitts because of how freaking beastly he is as a, a tight end, of course. And then... E.J. Terrell, cornerback's a little bit easier to draft, but obviously don't want to lose him either. And we're up against the money wall again. And with $4.15 million left remaining and needing to pay Rondale Moore, Drew Dahlman, and possibly some others. I will say it didn't cost them much to get Rondale Moore, but still. Win and in directly against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And let me tell you, if they lose this game, which they did, that is the choke of the century. I actually wonder if they made the playoffs in general. If they missed, that is a ridiculous choke. They still made the playoffs. They got lucky. But they were at one point, I believe, 8-3. We'll take a look in a sec. But let's take a look at our season first. Didn't change the scheme. Very bad start, but a really good finish. Uh, and, uh, yeah, didn't change the schemes because I've used the offense before in the past. But look at this. They lost five of their last six, and they barely snuck in. But yeah, we've used the Falcons offense before, and it's been pretty good for us. So not going to change it here just because I feel like, oh, maybe we change this now. We're just going to let it happen. Kirk Cousins, 31 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, 3,800 yards. I mean, that's pretty close to what you would get from a Kirk Cousins. Maybe a little bit less picks, but that's about fair rushing-wise. Not a whole lot of rushing touchdowns, especially for Bijan. Pretty good number of yards, though. And then Drake London, great numbers. Pitts was decent. Moore and Mooney, not the best. Blocking. Nine sacks allowed is the most. The rest, pretty damn good, actually. Defensively, Latu, the rookie, with 12 sacks. Six and a half for Jarrett, five for Ebikidi, and then the rest, you know, kind of some random numbers here and there. Three picks for Bullard. Maybe he'll have something going for himself. Obviously not rookie of the year, because Latu might have locked that up. A.J. Terrell with three as well. Phillips with two. One for Wilson, Bates, Phillips, and Alford. Kicker, Young Hui Koo, missed four kicks out of 19, but had one of them blocked, so it's a little bit less than that. And then Bradley Pinion, 51.8 yards per punt is definitely good. Anything over 50 uh, is a win to me. As far as MVP goes, it does go to Mahomes. No one's really shocked by that. Uh, offensive Player of the Year, not on the list. Defensive Player of the Year, uh, number five for Latu. Offensive Rookie of the Year, definitely not on the list, as we didn't even start a rookie. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, of course, goes to Latu. Then Carter, but then also Wilson, Bullard, Colson, and Phillips. They had a lot of rookies. A lot of rookies, and they were all pretty decent. Kirk Cousins, number 10 for best QB in the NFC. And then for running back, not on the list, because just no touchdowns, apparently. Uh, and then wide receiver, not on the list. Doesn't really surprise me. O-line, uh, not on the list either. D-line, not on the list. Linebacker, number 2. Best DB, not there. No, number 10 for Bullard. And then best kicker, all the way down at number eight. And here it is. We're in 86 overall. They're in 87. And we're in this playoff game. 7 to 0. Not a bad start. 7 to 7. 14 to 7. Nice little uh, nice little lead so far in the halftime. 21 to 7. Okay. In position to potentially win this game. Just like that. It's all tied up. 21 all. And talking about chokes with a minute and 11 left. Oh, we're in position to score, though. And from the 10, what are they doing? Oh, the clock's running. Fun. 10 seconds left. We're all just huddling up while the clock's moving. Can you get to the end zone, though? I mean, I kind of want to just streak it and throw that inside. Mooney, easy. Touchdown. Don't care. With the lead. Screw the field goal. Going to win a playoff game the very first season. Definitely nice to see. What a clutch end of the year. Giving us this playoff berth in the first place. Kirk Cousins was amazing. Uh, Bijan was all right. Mooney killed it with 10 catches, 100 yards, with two touchdowns. Mr. Consistency, apparently. Sacks, none. Picks, none. Kick, kicking was perfect. Okay, what a weird one. Usually you see some sort of mistake, but there was just no mistakes. Also, I did not get to see 
Ah, if we had the tackle for a loss or anything. Colson, no dev up. That is an L. And now we face off against the Cowboys. Only an 87 overall, though. I mean, they're not that super. I was expecting super, but they're they're beatable. Will we beat them? I don't know, but they are beatable. End of the game. 7 to 0. 10 to 0. 17 to 0. Oh, no. Not a great start as we have scored zero points in the first half. Second half comes around and nothing has changed. The Dallas Cowboys are going to win 31 to 7. What a fun close matchup. What a fun close matchup. Uh, Kirk Cousins, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Cream Hunt and company. Bijan was terrible. I mean, last week was pretty bad, too. CD Lamb cooked. Defensively, sacks. They had a lot. Latu with one and a half, at least. And they missed a kick, and we still didn't even come close. We were like, you can't miss what you don't take. <laughs> don't get into field goal uh, range. You can't miss one. The Chiefs versus the Cowboys. What an interesting matchup. I would have never guessed it. Who is it going to be for the win? The Cowboys. So we lost to the uh, Super Bowl champion Cowboys. I'm not really sure what we're supposed to do about that. But DevOps, Kirk Cousins regresses, but he doesn't go up in Dev, which is a massive, massive L. Defensively, Colson doesn't go up in Dev. Latu does. AJ Terrell does. And Bullard does. We'll take Bullard going up in Dev. That's actually a pretty big one for us. Uh, again, getting Dev for a, a safety to match with Jesse Bates is fine. Latu, the 83-plus overall he is, uh, he's kind of cooking. I almost want to put him at power as well because I don't know if that's like the move. Maybe dual style is, is the way to go. Um, speed doesn't really get much going for the actual finesse upgrade, but maybe we'd go with power. Why not? Keep going power rusher. So we have both of these skills, like 90 plus. That'd be kind of insane. Plus, the power move puts him at 87 power, 89 finesse, which is kind of crazy. He went up really high, whereas guys like Peyton Willis... Uh, Wilson, damn it, didn't really go up at all. Like, a lot of these different guys didn't really go up, you know, at all, really. But it is what it is. What can you do? So it looks like with our lack of money, Rondell Moore and Drew Dahlman are going to be both gone. Uh, can't even really technically afford the Drake London uh, fifth-year option, honestly. And we're negative still without re-signing anyone. So, uh, yeah, we're in a bit of a hole. I'm trying to see what I can do. I don't think I want to keep uh, Rondell Moore anyways because, I mean... It wasn't bad, but we could do better. Kayla McGarry, in real life, you never let him go. In game, though, guys like him and Anyamata, yeah, I think you might. We actually might release both of them. But unless I'm trying to keep Rondell Moore, which realistically I might need to, because our wide receiver room is not the best, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to keep Drew Dahlman. I'm not really sure what I want to do here. Rondell Moore had a pretty good year. It's a pretty good year, but I'd probably just you know rather develop Rice next season and then put Mooney in the slot. Or if we find a different wide receiver, develop them. So I think I'm going to let them both go, Drew Dahlman and Mr. Uh, Rondale Moore, unfortunately. There might be more money we can save to bring you know new players in, but I think we're going to probably be passing on free agency for the most part. We have $7 million left. And I prefer to keep any little bit I can. Also, I might actually roll this from now on. I have the QB regression on 50, which is like half of what it normally is. And, you know, Kirk Cousins still regressed, but he's not like dead. I think it's the one position that's very unique in the league where it's like, you're going to have guys that are going to retire by like 32 a QB. And then you're going to have others that are able to go to like 38 minimum. Pick 26 is a pretty weak quarterback class, I must say. There's a really good one, number one, you know, the top five pick. Uh, Noah Crawford, maybe he's even a gen – no, he's not generational because his uh, throw power is good. But very good quarterback. The rest, not so much. Uh, McCord's okay, but Huff, that's that's the guy I'll probably be aiming for. He's got a bunch of Bs, maybe even sneaks out a, uh, a hidden dev perhaps. But uh, he'll be the guy I take somewhere in the third, I imagine, maybe with that pick 26 in the third – but uh, as of right now, I don't really see myself trading up because it's not the best group of players I've ever seen. It's a pretty weak class in general. But if we can land a defensive tackle or something like that, that's a win in my book. Uh, we've got a couple of wide receiver options as well. Weathersby, Pool, Sellers. I will say that Sellers is 20 years old. And from my experience, I don't know why, but like every 20-year-old in the game is star dev plus. I don't know what it is, but I have seen it all the time. But I also do like neighbors quite a bit. So, uh... We'll see what we do there. Uh, do we have any DT options? Sweat is there. The DT I actually wanted is unfortunately not. So I don't really know if I believe in Sweat too much here. 
He's not a bad player, but he is pretty damn raw looking. So as much as I was going to take somebody here, I was hoping that the DT would have been there. Unless I go O-line, which I could just go later, I think I might trade down again. I'm a first-round trader. The Steelers are going to be giving me two third-round picks, neither for this season, but I am down for two third-round picks to move back. We're only moving back, like, what, 10 to 12 spots? It's not terrible. And they do get a really good tight end. Not that they really needed one, but sure, pick six in the second round. I don't know if it's a reach to grab one of these wide receivers, but I kind of want to. Sellers at... I really, I think Neighbors is better, though. I really do think Neighbors is better. Screw it, we're going to go with Neighbors. Six foot one, 22 years old, decently athletic. Boom. No, not boom. Insanely athletic, like I said, but uh, not boom. Just simply not boom. We need at least one O-lineman, maybe two, because I don't know about left guard. I don't know about right tackle for the future, even left tackle for the future. So we're going to be trading down with the Bengals here. I'm not getting a whole lot here, but I can just get to that spot and then make my way up. Uh, so pick seven in the third round is going to be, I would imagine, some sort of lineman. At 26 of the QBs there, I'm going to take them. Um, but as of right now, I think we're going to take a lineman. Oh, we don't have many linemen left, actually. There's only two. Breston, who obviously looks better than Kelly, and then Kelly. So one uh, Breston, Breeston. Oh, my God, no. Have a linebacker. Cool. Have a running back. Cool. I'm taking the quarterback. Nathan Huff, please be hidden. Ah, uh, Yikes. Get a fifth round pick with a decent fourth round pick, 26 in the fourth round to move up to the first pick in this round to grab, I believe, the final player on my list, which is Keelan Kennard, a linebacker with a bit of athleticism and a little bit of good key ratings. Could even be a super steal, and I think he is. 88 speed, 91 excel, hidden dev, looked great, and had to trade up. And I was going through running backs and found a random hidden development trait one, Bennett. 89 speed, 88 excel, 88 agility, 22, why not? Land ourselves a little stud. Kicker, punter, that's kind of a problem, I think, going future-wise. So let's maybe take a look at those positions here in the sixth round. Actually, let's go to the next round. Man always lying, but he's the only guy with decent kick power. Accuracy is pretty bad, though, and 92 kick power. Wow, I would really love to see what the rest of that class look like if he's 92 kick power. There was not a single player over decent besides him. And another Dave. I'm sure this is going to be great competition. 92 kick power. All Daves can kick 92 kick power out there in the world. If your name is Dave, maybe kick a few footballs, see what happens. Just give it a go. You might just be good enough. You just might. Looking at our cap room, 5 million left. We'd love to see it. Uh, 76 for the wide receiver, fair enough. 72 for the left guard, not fair enough. Uh, he's going to be our center, so we have no choice. Quarterback 67, we'll see how good he actually is. And then Kenner, the uh, draft pick of the draft, if you will. We do need to take a look at, is it Sellers, ironically enough? You can maybe call that us in the draft, but yeah, Luke Neighbors looks great. You know, we got Neighbors after all. What can I tell you? Uh, I don't care about the guard because he's normal dad. We need to replace him, but he'll be center for now, like I said. Uh, Huff, once again with these quarterbacks, low overall, but where am I seeing a bad quarterback? Because I'm not. I'm seeing a guy that has good, pretty good throw power, very good accuracy, and he even has the average sense of pressure. So... Really, all he was missing is hidden dev from being like a really good pick. And then Kennard, I don't know what to do here because he is already basically the highest ceiling best linebacker we have. But the other guys, they just need a dev up and they could be better. I mean, I guess Peyton Wilson slowed it down a little bit. Just want to say the wrong name. I guess he is already pretty good um, with dev, but still 24 years old as if he... Bennett, what's his dev? Man, we really did not land many devs. We landed two hiddens. One of them's not even... Well, I guess both of them aren't even starters. But let's take a look at the wide receiver we could have had. The DT I wanted, uh, I would have taken 100% if he was there. Maybe I should have slow simmed it because him at 22, I think that was him, uh, would have been worth it. Hidden dev! How do we land no DTs when we're this week on the interior, by the way? Like, what am I actually doing? Like, what am I genuinely... Like, why am I selling? Am I dumb? Like, am I some sort of dumb? Uh, where's the other DT we had? It was named Jones. Wow, he went all the way at 25, and I still didn't get him. Okay, it was normal, so what did we miss? 80 finesse. I guess there is potential there. Uh, and then I obviously do want to see the wide receiver. Uh, Poole was 76 overall. What was his dev? Lovely stuff. Of course, I can't go for the guy that's the weakest of the bunch, just because I'm, I'm gonna guess that he has hidden dev. I'm just gonna know somehow. Star dev isn't even that impressive anyways, but wide receiver dev ups are hard to get. And where was the other guy? Sellers went all the way down here, 75 overall. Also hidden. What did I say about 20-year-olds? Always star dev. You would think that the fact that they're young was good enough. But no, they're also going to be epi star dev. 
There are always going to be star plus. It doesn't matter. Oh, it's not even noticed. I was wondering why I kept seeing the name Moore. Rondale Moore must accept my three-year, $24 million deal. Nobody had an offer on him. I did three in a row. Didn't get crap. Here's the season two team. Definitely looking for quarterback, but Huff could be the guy of the future. You just never know. Neighbors, the number two wide receiver. He's got all the potential. It's just, can he get a dev up? Can he develop in general? Mooney, he wasn't great for us in general, and uh, we're just kind of riding out this contract at this point. He's kind of on the older side now. Uh, if you would have had a season, you know, maybe. But, uh, yeah, he's 27 now, low, low-ish low overall, 27 at least. O-line, we need a new center. Again, we need a new right tackle, probably. And then left guard, I don't know how he's going to develop. But we're, we're getting up there in age on the O-line. Defensively, Latu had an amazing season. We really needed it. We needed an edge rusher, and he already looks very elite. Looking at the rest of the squad, interior of the D-line, don't look at it. We need to replace those players, and... You know, there really wasn't much to replace them with. It was a pretty weak DT group. Lost like five games in a row. Super stoked about it. Drake London gets a contract. Ebikidi, I have to see how he's playing. He just failed the breakout, unfortunately. Eddie Goldman needs a contract. Probably not going to give it to him. Caleb McGarry, maybe. Uh, luckily, the money is back to where we hope it was going to go. Uh, and then obviously whenever you know, the old man retires, then we'll be even better. Uh, but Drake London, I mean, he's wide receiver one. He's got to be wide receiver one. So we're going to keep him on a seven-year deal. Oh, he didn't take it. Nice. Lovely. Uh, Algier, how has he played? I feel like he had a bunch of touchdowns, but did he actually, like, put up good yards per carry? I mean, that's not good. That's really, that's just not good. <laughs> there's there's no but to it. It's just like, hey, you know, I don't know what he said. If I knew something, whatever, I don't know, care what you know. But uh, Abikidi, once again, didn't get that breakout, so I can't imagine he's playing well. Four sacks. He's on par for better than last year. I mean, on a two-year 8.3, I mean, I'm down with that, even if he's just a backup. So might as well keep him around at that price. And then Grady Jarrett, that regression is hitting him hard. The whole interior of the D-line needs to be replaced, which we've got a lot of money to do it. We just got to hope there's some free agents. Yeah, I know they're going to be making the playoffs this time, unless you got a miracle run. Um, but... Yeah, we lost on top of a 7 and 10, the same exact scheme. I don't know if it's the defensive scheme or what's made it, you know, not work out this time around. Maybe tougher opponents, perhaps. Some pretty tough opponents in there. You know, the Texans, the Saints, the Packers. Maybe not the Saints so much, but the Cowboys. Uh, was there any other tough ones in there? Dolphins are pretty tough. Bills are tough. Rams are pretty good in sim. The Niners are a good team, and then you should never lose to the Patriots in sim. But, yeah, I mean, it's not the easiest teams to beat, so maybe it was just a tougher schedule, perhaps. But... Uh, let's take a look at the stats and awards, see if we did anything. Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, yards are down. Touchdowns are good, though. Picks are okay. Robinson, 1,400 yards. Touchdowns are low as well. Neighbors, the most yards on the team. London was the most efficient with touchdowns, I guess. Don't know if touchdowns are enough. But, yeah, the, the passing numbers are just not really working out. Blocking was terrible. Latu, down year, but 10 sacks and a 3-4 is basically like 17 sacks and a 4-3. Uh, Ebikidi. Probably just a backup at this rate, unless we go QB, which we could. Uh, first round uh, edge is probably the move. Young Hui Koo missing three out of 22 kicks is not as bad as the year before opinion. Dropped down, but still fine. Kick return, punt return game, nothing going on. I don't know if we've done enough here to get any sort of award win. Or, oh, yeah, neighbors, apparently, I guess. A lot of yards, but yeah, other than neighbors, there's really not much we did to deserve anything. And even neighbors probably doesn't deserve it. The NFC East is doing things again. Someone stop them, please. Are they? Well, I mean, in this case, I actually want them to win, but the Chiefs do win anyways. 47 million. Did we lose Kirk Cousins? We probably want to, but I doubt he did actually leave. He's a 77 overall now. Oh, no. Uh, neighbors goes him a dev, which is massive, obviously. Uh, and then we look at defensively. Any dev ups here? Mm, don't think so. I just kind of mooed at you. I'm sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, I don't think so. Not even Colson went up a dev, but he is an 81 overall, so... 24 years old, 81 overall. Just need to dev up, and the pick would still be really good. Wilson, I think it might just be a lost cause, to be honest. That age, it just, this is why, though, I try not to draft 23 year olds. This is why. You know, he's not developing well. And it's because he started off older, which means more XP to get per upgrades. The older you are, the less XP you get, I'm also pretty sure. So, you know, things, things have happened. But let's go to the Falcons in the retirement, see if we had any. Matthew Stafford goes lucky. Marquis Goodwin, of course, that's um, one of my like kind of favorite mentor veterans to to sign in free agency, and he's gone. But it's time to resign. Let's see if there was anyone we missed. Uh, I signed the guys I wanted to. I think for the most part, there might have been like another name or two in there that maybe we wanted to give a second look at, like uh, Caleb McGarry. 
Uh, Bijan with a fifth-year option. In real life, you absolutely give running backs fifth-year options. In game, though, it's stupid because we're going to be resigning him anyways. Algier, I offered a two-year 11. He didn't take it, so F that. Grady Jarrett, do I really want to replace like the whole damn D-line in one go? Probably not. So if I can get him on a one-year 10 or a one-year 11, I'll do it. He accepts. $36 million left. Eddie Goldman, no. Caleb McGarry, how good actually is he? Give up a bunch of sacks. I mean, we could do better than that. I'm sorry, but we can. And I think that was it, right? The punter, he's getting older. You know, just barely over 50 yards for punt. So we're just going to replace those guys and move on. $36 million, I'm not really sure what I want to spend money on other than like a DT. Cornerback, cornerback, a lot of like, you know, cornerback types. O-line, we could definitely use a tackle. Trent Brown would be interesting. Uh, Jalen Phillips, we could use an edge rusher, but I don't know if he's the edge rusher. Ooh, Reader's a lot of money. He is a fortune, but if I'm going to get him on a one-year 20, I would do it. The fact that that's what a one-year 20 looks like is crazy. Uh, what else do we have? Sheriff. I need a tackle more than anything. But yeah, there's very, very expensive players here. And a lot of them aren't even good. All right, a bunch of names. It was really surprising because a bunch of different teams got onto the DJ Reader train, but he ended up still sticking it out with us. But we lost DJ Humphreys. I offered him one year seven. He was a little more interested in joining us. He ends up going on a one year 10 to the Titans. But that's fine. You know, I'd rather uh, get DJ Reader than uh, Humphreys at this rate anyways. All right, we're in the draft and there are two options. We are one pick away. There is an edge rusher and there is an interior lineman. I don't really care which one we get. So whatever happens, happens, and we have the choice of both. Sweet. Uh, DT is really not good yet again, unfortunately. So if we don't go with this left end right here, we might be screwed. We might be screwed. Uh, you could potentially go Joey Nixon at edge. So, you know, he's not the fastest, but you're getting yourself like maybe a Preston Smith type, I guess, even though he's a lot smaller in height. But really, I mean, as far as, like, DT goes, interior goes, which is our biggest, biggest need, Jermaine Rowe is, like, the best option. So I'm, believe it or not, going to go Jermaine Rowe, and he is hidden. Nice. Nice start. And then I'm going to probably trade up for Nixon at, like, 20-ish if he's there. Then we have a quarterback, but he's 2-3 to three talent grade, which, I mean, I could still see him being star dev, but I'm not really sure what I want to do with that. I don't know what I want to do with that information. We trade 43 and 86 to move up. 224 with the Texans. Our next pick is now in the third round. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull off a trade for that quarterback, but Joey Nixon is going to be my choice. He looks actually really solid, so that's going to be our guy. Not the fastest, but he should be like 78, 79, maybe 80 speed. And yeah, I, was, I mean, I did say three numbers, which, I mean, obviously improved our odds, but yeah, I mean, we're correct. 88 strength, hidden dev. We're helping that front four. I got to say it. With this being the trade comp to move up to the Cardinals spot, middle of the second, I worry about trying to move up again. This was actually uh, going to be the quarterback, Underwood. He is still there somehow, and 2-3, to three, I mean, it's 2-3 to three right now. And like I said, those types of players usually do have star dev, and I'm going to be willing to bet on star dev. Uh, that's what I'm betting on here. A bunch of Bs, decent athleticism, star dev. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just saying, okay, these types of players are very common. He might even give Kirk Cousins a run for his money here. Quite literally, a run for his money. Uh, I'm hoping these linemen don't continue to fall. <laughs> oh my god, I, I do hope they continue to fall, but uh, they're starting to get picked up a little bit here. Like I said, there's linemen, but there's not many linemen after the, the second or third round. I really want Jowers, though, so realistically, do I feel great about anyone but Jowers? Probably not. Linebacker was their top three needs, and uh, Kennard is a pretty good-looking linebacker, so I'm just going to trade Wilson over to the Commanders for two fourth-round picks, which, I mean, we took Wilson very high in the second, so the, f the return on that is not great, but we at least get something before it's too late. Uh, and then with this pick, I am going to be taking, uh, I think, Redmond. I also just saw this random safety here that kind of piqued my interest, and no, he does not. <laughs> he looks good off the, the rip, but no. Uh, taking a chance on Redmond. And he's hidden. Oh, my. I mean, he looked so mid. It was unbelievable. We're going to go to 23. I didn't even really want this pick, but I figured if that safety's still there at 23, I'll take him. If not, maybe I'll trade down for more value. Uh, Freddie Orr, I think he was okay speed, right? That's good enough for me. Normal dev, 90 speed, 91 XL. We got more depth at safety. And then the next picks. Going to hope to find some special teamers because I think we still need a punter. Elite kick, power kicker. 96 kick, power. 
That's our man's. And then David, there's a lot of Dave, Davids, all that kind of stuff. A great kick power. 94 is our new starting punter. All right, let's take a look at the overall. 74, 75, 71, 73, 68, 71, 73. So we obviously have to compare this guy to the other edge rusher we could have had. Ooh, power move's bad, but block shed is good, like we expected. Uh, to see what kind of decision we made here, and his dev is only star. So this is why, obviously... We really don't like to go interior of the line high because, you know, we've seen players that are just as good as this, if not better, in the third round. It just hasn't been in this rebuild, unfortunately. Then we have Joey Nixon, who is very good power move. Okay, block shed. Athleticism is definitely questionable, but he's going to have to play outside linebacker. You know, there's, you know, slow outside linebackers out there in the league, and he's only star dev. So not the best stuff in the world, but, you know, we can only work with what we can work with. They really didn't give us many options on DT. Uh, Underwood looks weird. I don't know why. He just looks weird, but he's he's decent. I'd imagine no higher than star. It's just, like, locked in at star pretty much. Dev is star. <laughs> no shocker there. Uh, and then the left guard, Renman, I suppose, would be our center for this season. Oh, wait, no. He would have to be a right tackle. We don't even have a tackle, do we? We don't have a right tackle, so enjoy going from left guard to right tackle. He's like, why did you guys bring me here? What is wrong with you? Uh, but let's take a look at that Lambert fella. Lambert is the guy that we could have had decided not to go with him. Uh, 73 overall. Oh, and we made the right call. Normal dev. For this specific moment, Underwood should be in the starting lineup. But for this specific moment... We are going to be rocking with this squad. Uh, there could be a quarterback change. We'll see what happens with Underwood after, uh, you know, preseason. If Underwood looks better in preseason, Kirk Cousins is not starting. Right now, it would be, in real life, it's like $57 million for the for the regular salary and then like 23 dead hit for releasing or whatever. But in for us, it's less. I think it's a little more front-loaded in Madden. I'm pretty sure. Either way, it's a four-year 160 or whatever the contract was. I did it from real life, so... Um, yeah, well, we'll see what happens there. And then defensively, we have, you know, potential. We obviously have to put Reader in position and then Row in position. Boom, solved. Uh, we've got potential. That's all I can say. All right, moment of truth. Time to find out who the quarterback of the future is. Underwood. Oh, my God. Underwood was terrible in that first game. Let's take a look at the second game. Underwood and Cousins both similar. And unless Underwood killed it and Kirk Cousins sucked, I think it's Kirk Cousins' season again. And Underwood was better than he was before, but yeah, Underwood with those three interceptions was never going to win the job, which I know, realism-wise, uh, this makes sense. But in game-wise, it would be very, 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 very smart for us to start Underwood now and as, as a rookie, but we're going realism. We, it's supposed to be a realistic-style rebuild. That's it. Some of you guys are like, this. these were realistic-style rebuilds this whole time? But yeah, this is, uh, is quote-unquote realistic-style. So Kirk Cousins, one more year as a starter. Until he starts sucking. If he starts sucking, then, you know, smile. That was sexual joke. I don't know if this is going to be a good season for us. And if it's not, we're really going to regret not using Underwood. But what can you do? And Roe already getting one of his uh, two for camp standout. 159 mil while we have money. So we can pay Bates. We can pay Bijan. We can pay, pay Clark, uh, Clark Phillips. We can pay Bergeron if we want. Uh, we could pay Reader if we want. We could pay literally anyone we want at this point, and we're chilling. Kirk Cousins will retire on us. We're fine. Latu already the fifth-year option. Man, this rebuild is going by. It is going by. But we're going to pay Bijan a seven-year deal because at his overall, he should be viable till then. He wants a little bit more. Okay. Bates, four-year 81. I'm willing to pay that. You know, once again, high overall, high dev. You can get away with that easily. Clark Phillips, six-year deal worth 42 is a huge steal for us. Bergeron, we'll pay everyone. I don't know what kind of fall-off I just witnessed, but luckily for us, the rest of the division was terrible. And this is probably the first time in this Madden history, at least, where we made the playoffs at 8-9. The rest of the division was 5-12 and 12 each. I don't know what happened to us. We were doing really well. Look at our loss streak. Where is it? Six straight games. Oh my, EA. You are on something today. But I'll show you guys our win-loss. I'll show you the rest of the division as well because it is sus as hell. I uh, can't lie. But look at these losses to the Bears, the Panthers, the Commanders and Vikings, and the Steelers. Yeah, that's a GG. There is 
zero chance we're doing anything. There is zero chance. Oh my. I mean, look at this. The teams we lost to, despite the fact that they sucked. I don't know how to tell you, but we're in the playoffs. It's something, I guess. It's something. Let's take a look at stats and awards. Uh, looking at quarterbacking, Kirk Cousins definitely had a fall off, but Underwood was just terrible in preseason. Bijan, you know, fair enough, I guess. Drake London. Some mid numbers, to be honest. We made the playoffs, but barely. Uh, Latu, another double digit sack season. Love it. Row, seven. Six for Reader. Nixon, the new man on campus, doing literally exactly what Ebikiti does. 34 is just so terrible. Young Hoya gave him a two year deal, and he missed 33% uh, of his kicks. Rondell Moore with a kick return touchdown, though. You get like one kick return touchdown every like 20 seasons, I swear. MVP goes to Dak, because of course he's the best quarterback in the league. Row wins Rookie of the Year, which is great. And Latu wins best linebacker. So Latu, I don't know about Verse, but I haven't really seen his name unless he went to an AFC team. Uh, it's been a good decision for us, I will say. I'm very glad that we picked up Latu. Although, here we are, playoffs against the Lions. We have them by one whole overall. Going to the end of the game. 0-0, zero 7-0. Zero, seven zero. Nice little start, 7-7. Seven seven. Lions bounce back. They look like they're doing more on offense than us, and they are as they have the seven-point lead. Could have been more if they had more time. 17-7, 17-14, 24-14. It's not looking good for us. We need to score something on this drive, and on fourth and inches, we go for it. I'm not really sure what we're doing here. We finally get the field goal, but, like, literally all the clock is gone. And on third and two, this is for the game. And, of course, even if we do get the stop, they could just kick the field goal, most likely. I mean, you kind of have no choice but to go goal line, I think. Jesse Bates one on one. I mean, we should have this. Got to run commit. And wow, what a play! Give it up. They're gonna have to punt it. I mean, they don't have to, but they they're choosing to. That was a hell of a play, and it's not a bad punt at all. Oh, it's a really bad punt apparently. Okay, it was such a bad punt that they didn't even flip the camera around. He shanked it before we could even do that. But it's still a 79 yard drive with zero timeouts. Anywhere on the field is free. So whatever I see is what I'm going to take. And that is a perfect play to the 49-yard line. Neighbors gets out of bounds as well. Kirk Cousins, that was like a third of his yards on the day, I'm pretty sure. I seen something really ridiculously sad there a moment ago. Running Moore streaking against their best corner. Maybe it'll distract him. Drake London, he wins, but his route running is terrible. Is that Neighbors again? A little behind him, and I, I kind of had to adjust because I felt like it was going to be picked. Maybe I was wrong. I don't know. Looks like they're going to be relaving single coverage against Pitts. Is this not going to be like a, a freebie? I guess. Well, yeah, it is for their offensive line. Kirk Cousins with the slowest release of all freaking time. Tell me I shouldn't have gotten that ball off. Am I crazy? Like, am I genuinely an insane person? Look how much time it's taken. Yeah, let, let's just, just chill. You know, whatever. Whatever, Kirk. We're barely even going to get that ball off. And we are going to set up a Hail Mary, it seems. Well, here we go. It's Hail Mary time. At least we have this opportunity, I suppose. Of course, Kirk Cousins with low throw power overthrows a Hail Mary. Way to go. Oh, my. It's like a 60-yard throw for an 85 throw power quarterback, and he overthrows it. Ow. Ow. What is wrong with this game? How does he overthrow that? It was a pretty bad game from him, can't lie. 50% completion percentage. Uh, Robinson tried to carry, couldn't do it. And unfortunately, we did make the playoffs, which is great, but we uh, we do not go any further than the divisional round. Going into year four, starting a brand... Oh, not even the divisional round. It was the wild card. I, why did I think we won that game? Like, the first game. It, this was the first game. But... Uh, yeah, and we're starting a brand new quarterback for year four because, you know, Kirk is going to be gone. Lovely. I suppose if you're doing a rebuild of the Kirk Cousins Falcons, you know, we want to see it all the way to the end as long as Kirk can play. And uh, that, unfortunately, is probably going to be it. No more Kirky. It is now Underwood or if we find some other quarterback, their time to play. The Chiefs win. Is that their third straight Super Bowl? Am I seeing here? Uh, he did retire in Underwood. The 73 overall is now the starter. No dev ups on any of the other offensive players. Rowe should be a superstar, which he is. No other dev ups, not even Colson on defense. And that is basically that. And Reader drops five overalls. I love that. 
I love that for him. That is awesome. I love seeing players I was debating on resigning become players I don't want to resign anymore. It's super fun. Uh, really good power move upgrades here for Jermaine Rowe, who is by far the best defensive lineman we have now on the interior. 84 block shot, 79 power move. I think Grady Jarrett's even unusable at this point. 77 overall, yeah. Could be some free agents, though. We'll see. We'll see what we got. Uh, retirements, I mean, doesn't really matter. Half the players on this damn team need to retire. Although I guess I should have looked at retirement since good old Kirky finally went. Rest in peace. Let's take a quick look at that. Falcons uh, retirement. Or I'll just look right here. Riley Dixon, Derek Henry goes. Travis Kelsey, David Bach. Uh, our guys, we had a bunch of, you know, mentor types, but Kirk Cousins, and that's really it. I guess Marcus Peters, kind of, but once again, another veteran, lower overall player. Retire for us, those are the big names for us. 86 million, do we have any fifth year? 96 million, 97 million, actually. Latu, fifth year option, I'm just going to take care of that right now, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and then DJ Reader, I think you can get better, or just not have to spend that kind of crazy money on someone that's not the best anymore. Let's go on in to free agency, where hopefully there is a defensive lineman DT type. There's really no one ever, though. It usually used to be like Aaron Donald, but obviously now we, like, remove him because he's retired. Don't know if we're going to find anyone, Frank Ragnow. I mean, we need O-line as well, I suppose, and we have a lot of money, so I'm not sure why I wouldn't try to pay someone that's, like, worth it. Deron Payne, he's not even that great. He's more of a name at this rate. DeForest Buckner. I'm probably going to go for DeForest Buckner, maybe even Deron Payne. Benton, there might still be some chances to develop there, I suppose. But yeah, about as weak of a free agency class as usual. So right, we entered the draft with pick number 19, and I might have wasted all of our private scouting because I put it all on quarterback. It's not that I don't believe in Underwood, it's just that there was some pretty damn elite looking options with Barton, Curry, and Alexander, and I figured, never leave a stone unturned. You might find your house key under it. And, uh, while well, they're not bad, and, you know, none of them are really bad, one or two talent grade tells me, you know, maybe like a 74 overall star plus, perhaps, but no guarantee on that either. So, Underwood being a guaranteed 73 overall star plus at 22 years old, I think means that we probably are not going to be going quarterback. Uh, there is an edge option, there's potential DT option, I don't know how I really feel about Gabe Kelly, uh, Greenwood's kind of similar to him, if you will. And then Sims, a little bit better of a pass rusher. 276. You're really kind of toting that line of, is he really interior or not? But, yeah, I mean, realistically, I don't think I'm going to be trading up. I don't really feel any of these guys are worthy of a trade-up. So, pick 19, whatever happens, happens. And, of course, we still have two of the quarterbacks still effing there. Malcolm Curry. It is intriguing. I will say it. It is intriguing, but... I do not think we're going QB. We just... Not that we can't, I just don't think we should. I just simply don't think we should. I want to go with some sort of defensive lineman in tier. Corn Madden, I suppose, is a little bit more fitting. I might just go Gabe Kelly. I think he's raw, though. That's what I don't like. Greenwood, obviously, gone. Corn uh, Madden, 22 years old, 6'3", 279. Decently strong. Uh, not even decently, he's very strong. Uh, and then you have Gabe Kelly, also 22 years old, a little bit weaker. I don't know what to do. I really don't know. I mean, this is kind of like the best time to take one of these players, so I probably will end up selecting. We also have a corner who looks okay. Um, I don't know. Corn Madden's a little undersized. I'm going to go Gabe Kelly because of the size. Don't be normal. Whew, I don't know what it is, but something about the way it goes in sometimes tells you if they're soup, they're hidden or uh, normal. And I thought it was normal. It kind of like, I don't know, it does like a delayed go in, if you will. And of course, because no teams really need QB, all of the QBs are still there. Also, I didn't mention, but we did get Frank Ragnall and uh, DeForest Buckner. So we're actually in an okay spot on the trenches after that selection. Uh, but let's see if there's any other trench players we can go for. Ooh, tell for the center. Richard, the center. The guard, Colin Marks, is pretty good. Uh, linebacker. Do we really need linebacker? I don't know. Maybe maybe like Cage. I think we can trade down to like the early third. Eh, is this really early third? I don't know if I could really say that. 74. What's the difference between... 76. 74 is a bit close. Yeah, I think 74 is, what, 8th 
in the next round? 10th. Yeah, it is what it is. Close enough. Close enough. And with that, there should be some linemen. There are at least one. I think he is the best bet. Mike Richard. Future center? I don't know. But Hidden Dev, very athletic. Decent strength as well. Trade a fifth round pick to go up eight spots in the third round. Might have even been an overtrade, but I don't really care. We're going to get another lineman. Future proof in the line a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, I think that's going to be the position, right? I do also want this uh, this beard guy because he looks very fast. Uh, I don't know much about the remaining linemen, but I think Ashmore is the best of the two. So, Channing Ashmore. Hidden Dev, we win. We do another fifth round pick to move up 10 spots this time. The literal fifth round merchant. We're going to be going for the linebacker, Tom Oliver. I think Cage was a little bit better, but Tom Oliver is good enough for me to trade up since we're close enough. And maybe I was wrong. I just really wanted the depth, to be honest. Uh, and the wide receiver is there. The speedy Gerald Beard, 21 years old. That could be a superstar. That is not a superstar, but he's very athletic. 98 speed, 98 excel, 99 agility, 99 change of direction, 94 jump. What a goon. Just normal. A normal goon. All right, look at the overalls of the players. We drafted 75 for that AT. The center was a 72. Ashmore was a 74. Oliver was a 73. 71 for Beard. Uh, and then we got a really high overall fullback. The rest were kind of mid. Let's take a look at Kelly. Uh, I don't really care too much about the other guys. They're kind of, you know, backup future progression type players. Great block shed from Kelly. Decent power move. We could have used a, an actual pass rusher a little bit more. We'll say that this guy just felt like a better chance to be guaranteed hidden. And, oh, okay. I was actually about to say that I felt like he was a star, not a superstar. Uh, but, yeah, fair enough. Mike Richard. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's okay. I feel like one of these guys might be a superstar, though, speaking of superstars. And it's not Mike Richard. I'll tell you that much. Whitmore. A little bit more fitting to play tackle, and I think we do need a tackle of some sort. So maybe move the guy that we've had at right tackle to left tackle because he's got more experience at the pro level. And I guess it's wrong. No uh, no superstars. Let's take a look at the DN. We could add Matt. Was Matt in the better guy? Where the hell is he? Where is he? Did he not even go in the first round? I mean, I'm obviously moving down far here, but I don't see him. Oh, there he is. Pick 16 in the second round. Normal dev. Okay, we dodged a bullet there. Oh, he's bad. Season 4 team, as you can see here, uh, the offensive line is vastly improved. from Ragnar on that two-year $40 million deal uh, next to Lindstrom. The interior is really good, ironically enough, as we start off with really good tackles. Tackles need some work, but, you know, they are hidden, and that are star plus, and that's all that matters. Pitts, great tight end one, wide receiver one and two, well on their way to becoming a top 10, top 15 duo. Running back is a 96 plus overall, and then Underwood's a brand new starting quarterback, so we'll see what happens there. Defensive line in the interior, we've always got some sort of brand new squad, but this is definitely one of our more promising ones, as we have Rowe, who is a pretty good player, and then Kelly, who's not a bad player. He was actually superstar, wasn't he? Superstar, so two superstar interiors, and then Buckner is an X-Factor, probably need to replace him next season, but... Not bad at all. Colson's the only guy with uh, normal dev, but yet he's an 83 overall. So just get that dev up to star, and we're really cooking. Wonder what Nixon's going to do as a full season starter. I don't know, but either way, this team has definitely come a long way. And with that being said, we should more or less command a playoff spot rather than lucking into one going forward. As you lose 27 to 0 to start off preseason. Lovely. We're having a pretty good season, but more importantly, the rest of the division is playing pretty poorly. Duh, Javon Bullard, who just had a breakout chance, failed it. We have a super steal with a six year 30. Then, though, you have a uh, five year deal worth about 60 million for Colson, which isn't a bad contract for him, but, you know, a little bit on the lower overall side for that kind of money, but. You know, it's it's worth it, I suppose. A bunch of different names here that we kind of want to keep. Uh, what about the future? None? Okay, we're chilling. Uh, Buckner, I don't know what's going to happen there. He might even retire. Uh, Epikiti, not going to happen. Phillips, I mean, the money's there for a three-year. Three-year 13 for a great backup. Number three is not bad. Same with Ron Dale. I'm kind of feeling that as well. I'm not going to lie. How well is he playing? If he's playing like his normal self, I'm kind of just willing to keep him. Yeah, I mean, he's playing like his normal self. I mean, does that give us a better chance to win? I don't know. Can we do, like, something like this? Okay, maybe not. 
We'll see. And we're back in the playoffs. 10 and 6, maybe 11 and 6. We do go 11 and 6. Nice little finish there against the division rivals. 11 and 6 versus 11 and 6, but it is the Dallas Cowboys, unfortunately. But you can only play who's out in front of you, so we are going to hope for the best. We lost four in a row, but then we won four in a row. So definitely, uh, you know, some ups and some downs, but some big streaks in there. And uh, B. John Robinson was in the top three running back list. Ben Underwood, I mean, didn't change the scheme one bit. Made uh, Kirk Cousins look kind of bad. Uh, and, of course, looking at running backs, Bijan was amazing. Receivers, you know, it was kind of like a split effort and a lot of rushing yards. So no one really did a crazy amount to really get a dev up, but still it was a good season. Blocking was amazing. Uh, did one of our guys, Lindstrom, finally gets a superstar, thankfully. Latu with 16 sacks is amazing. Rowe with 8 sacks is not bad. Kelly with 6.5 sacks is all right. And then Nixon at 4.5 is disappointing. Six total interceptions. Four missed kicks out of 14 for Young Hui. And then Black with 53.5 yards for a punt is really good. Could have a couple of awards here. Uh, were we on the list for QB? No. Drake May actually wins the MVP award. Bijan, best offensive player of the year on the NFC side. Latu almost yoinking the defensive player of the year award. Offensive player of the year? No. Defensive player of the year number two. That's a really painful quarterback. I'm a little surprised he's not on the list. Am I crazy? Am I crazy or should he have been on that list? I don't know. But best running back goes to Bijan. Best wide receiver. We were not there. O-line, of course, Chris Lindstrom. That's why I said it. Because we knew he won the award with that. Rowe at number eight. Latu at number one for linebacker. DB, nowhere to be seen. And then kicker, damn well, nowhere to be seen. In the playoffs, as the home team. But against the, the Cowboys could already mean a one and done. Going to the end of the game. Can Underwood start his first season and take us to and potentially win a Super Bowl? 17-14 to start the second half. Huge rushing touchdown, I would assume, by Bijan. They have gained back that three-possession lead. We have regained the double possession. And just like that, even though we're the home team, because of the Cowboys' scheme, we have pulled off the upset. Underwood... Good enough. 80% completion percentage is great. Under 200 yards, but Dak didn't do much better. Bijan Cook, though. 200 yards with three touchdowns on four carry 14 carries is crazy good. Dak with all those runs. I don't know if he was just trying to clock the ball or whatever, but uh, we got a couple of sacks in there. Jesse Bates with a pick. And beating the Cowboys is like basically winning the Super Bowl on its own, knowing Oz will lose to some like random team that's just out of the blue, like the Cardinals or something, but... Other than something like that happening, this is a really good, strong chance to win it all. The division around is it against the Green Bay Packers, huh? Okay. Decent overall, but only at 9 and 8. I don't know if I've seen the Chiefs on the bottom, but i definitely seen the Bills moving on. Will it matter to us anyways, though? 7 all. The Packers are holding, you know, kind of a lead here. 21-7, to not a great start. Second half, 24-7. to Nice touchdown, but will it be enough? Third and 8, is this our ball? Fourth and eight now. I mean, you pretty much have to go for this. I don't know what they're seeing where they're like, yeah, you know, I guess to be four, fair, 13 minutes is a lot of minutes. Yeah, this is actually a really dumb decision to be going for this, but it is what it is. Speed. Pure speed, but it's behind him. You crapper. Under 100 yards throwing this game, and I can see why we're losing. Under 100 yards with a pick and no touchdowns. That is crazy. Fourth and two, the field goal. It was a short field goal to get, you know. Oh, my God, this quarterback sucks. This quarterback is straight buns. How many picks is this guy going to throw? Like, I think that was his third. I think he had three, two interceptions in between when we just came in there like a second ago. And Drake London, that is a great throw in fairness. Oh, nice. I've seen better miss worse. Like, miss the throw. I don't know. Neighbors streak. Let's see if we got him. Not really open, but we're going to take it. There's no way he hits that throw. Who is this guy? All of a sudden, he can hit these throws. We'll take it. This guy's some sort of goon. They're running the ball really well. Third and four now. This is the game. This is absolutely the game. Do they go with a pass, though? Because we get the ball back no matter what with a timeout. It's risk. All the time in the world, it's underthrown, but he's still going to get it there. Got to go for the hit six, not going to get it, and the Packers will win. Some press you got there. 
Please, for the love of God, tell me it wasn't AJ Terrell that was beat. Don't tell me that he was just beat by this guy. Okay, it was someone else. It was whoever was... Who was supposed to cover him? Excuse me? Somebody? Well, we literally lost. I mean, it's it's physically impossible. We gotta, like, blow them up on this play. Oop, punch the mic. And where's Jacobs? Oh, it is Jacobs. He's just wearing number 22. Well, I mean, it's a GG. It was not destined to be. And we're not even gonna get him. Just trying to strip. Won't give it to us. And that'll be a game lost. The Packers versus the Falcons by six. Too many mistakes. Too many mistakes. Going for it on the uh, that fourth and eight. Apparently it was a smart move because uh, we lost by six and it was their ball. So the only chance we would have had is if we really converted that. Looking at the picks, though. Two for Underwood. What a bot. Uh, you know, rushing-wise, Bijan was what he does. He is who he is. Defensively, three sacks for Nixon, who cooked. That was almost his whole regular season numbers. Like, make it make sense, EA. What do you want? Why are these, the, you know, the edge rushers putting up almost their whole season stats in a singular game when it's a tougher experience? Like, what is going on with this sim that it's so broken? But either way, let's head to the Super Bowl. Is it going to be the Chiefs in, like, the 9 millionth Super Bowl we've seen? I can't remember how many they've been in this one, but at least two, I think. They might have even won two. So they're on, like, a, they were on a Ford Pete or something like that. I don't even know, but let's take a look. It is the Bills and the Commanders. Okay, someone new. I suppose someone new. With probably the Commanders just being the upset team. And no, it was the Bills. They have upset... The Commanders, they are mad. Let's take a look at the Dev Ups. Uh, Robinson actually goes up in Dev, which, you know, even though Robinson's amazing, had an amazing season, it is hard to go up in Dev as a running back. It is not easy. Sadly, another wide receiver. Sadly, Underwood didn't go up in Dev. Didn't really expect much from them. Colson is still normal Dev, though. Does anyone want to help him out? Anyone at all? Just like a little bit after school, after class credit. You know, just, just like a tiny bit. But I guess not. I guess not. We have about $70 million to spend in free agency, I believe. Don't think we have to re-sign anyone unless there's, like, a, a name that I was debating on going for. But if the price was wrong, we weren't going to take him, which a lot of times it is. Oh, yeah, it was Ron Dale. He's not really, like, a price is wrong situation. But at the same time, he didn't have the best of seasons. And how much does a slot wide receiver really matter? But I do kind of feel bad because even though it was the open market, he did kind of come back to us in the first place on a cheap deal. But... It's a little too expensive at this point. 66 mil. What position do we really need? Corner, I guess. Uh, guard deck. Why is he such a goon? Palmer. Palmer's a decent number three, I suppose. Uh, Brian Thomas. Okay, that makes sense. Why would he be a free agent? Rondale Moore. No one wants him. We might be able to pull this off again. Can we pull off another heist? A three or 28 is not really a heist, but it's still cheaper than they wanted. Fautanu. Some pretty damn good players in here. The real-life rookie class is falling apart in free agency. You usually don't see this. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but the teams are screwed. Rondell Moore, just come back already. What are you waiting for? Boom, we cooked. And with 57 mil left and one more draft, assuming we only do five seasons here, I have no idea what we need. Hey, look, we got Rondale Moore back. Do we have anyone else on our list? No? Okay, fair enough. So we picked 26. Uh, the biggest need is DT. Buckner, I think, straight up just retired, if I'm not mistaken. Do we have quarterback on the list? We said no. No to your quarterback. Maybe I should have looked at Alexander, but no to your quarterback anyways. Uh, ooh, Callaway, 2-3, to three, but actually a lie. He's actually a 1-2. to two. I should have scouted uh, Middlebrook, Middleton more. But I looked more at the O-line because I felt like, worst case, we just go Ellison. So I think we're chilling. We're going to be moving on to 26 and then potentially trading down so we can land the wide receiver that we probably don't even need, but the value looks great. And the uh, DT, or one of the DTs. Oh, and then you also have a sick tight end. We don't need tight end, but like, are you joking? Are, are you kidding me? Like, this guy's insane. We're going to go to 39 with the Texans, get a bunch of different things, and still look pretty good to grab basically anyone we want at 7. Um, if the tight end's still somehow there, i got to take him. But if not, which he likely won't be, then uh, we go elsewhere. Uh, Callaway is not my biggest need, so uh, I think based on what I physically know, but then again, 
it's a very good chance that Cheney is a finesse. It says A to C. Ooh, four six four is where. Yeah, four six four. I almost said two six four. They're both really good. So do I not just wait and just let one of them fall to me? I'm gonna go Callaway. Kirk Callaway is gonna be the guy hidden. Well, that was a waste because he'll never see the light of day. Honestly, now that I think about it, why did we go with Callaway at all? Now I regret everything. And some here all way all the way down at 26 in the second round. We have a choice at either of the DTs. Uh, I don't know. My mind's telling me Cheney. My body's telling me Cheney. I'm going Cheney. <laughs> do I trade up for both? Do I do this to myself? Because we did get that extra pick. I think I'm going to do it. 91 million negative. Have they not been negative 91 million for the whole rebuild? How do they have players? Like, relinquish them all to us. Okay, that's not really going to work out too well. Uh, extra third next year, so we'll see where that gets us. Okay. Can we begin with this? Okay, okay, we can live with this. Boom. Done. Easy clap. Don't worry about it. No, it actually did work. Fair enough. Uh, I'm hoping Allison's good because we traded up quite a bit to get him. Basically, everything we traded for on that down trade is for this trade up. So if he sucks, we could have just had the tight end and we would have been cooking. Allison. Boom. All right. So I made the wrong call, but luckily we got the hidden dev. We got him. It took us a second go at it, but we have done it. I think the Dolphins got a good trade here. Breston, we have... <laughs> Jamal. I don't know what his first name is. Uh, a third-round pick this year, two sevens, and Breston, who really just got screwed over by a better option coming along. Not that he was bad. For uh, a good, like, 19 spots, maybe even less trade-up, which, ironically enough, is going to give us a new lineman. But this makes sense because, uh, well, this guy looks amazing, for one. But two, Breston needs a contract. Bullard will not need a contract. And Bullard is hidden. All right, we're in the fifth round. We're going to go with a really athletic six foot six player who is normal dev. Nice. We are really picking these wide receivers like some sort of goons. We're like the new Steelers. Are the Steelers the best team to draft wide receivers? They usually are the ones that are kind of called the wide receiver factory. I mean, you got to give Green Bay some credit too, though. I suppose uh, Seattle, but they don't really like snag players, if you will. Like Seattle's kind of like, well, we kind of have them on our radar type of situation. I just think it is still funny, though, to this day, where, like, all these teams passed on Metcalf because they're like, he's got no agility. He can only run a straight line. And now guys like MVS were getting paid 10 mil per year only running a straight line and have no hands. It's like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Make up your damn mind. Now the league loves their fast go straight guys. But no, Metcalf, he can't he can't be agile. He's a six foot three, super speedy tank. Why would anyone want that? Uh, but anyways, uh, this is what the team looks like. You know, they're decent overalls, but the fact that some of them are not hidden makes me the sad. Callaway is a 74 overall. I really need to see that tight end though. This guy's got all the potential in the world, though. Look at this. I mean, he's got the injury for it, the stamina for it. He's got an amazing juke move for his size. He has all the catching traits. Good enough jump. Great spec. Great regular catch. Decent enough release. Decent enough short route. He's got a little bit of speed. That is a guy you can develop. But, unfortunately, uh, we're not developing him. Ellison, 76 finesse. Is he actually even our starter? Like, if he's only star, there's really no difference between him and the other guy. Except for the other guy might be better. Like, there's... I mean, oh, Cheney's starting, dude. He's six better finesse. So we traded up for basically nothing. Nice. What about the six foot six wide receiver, Glenn Monroe? No aggressive catch at six foot six, but of course has the 99 juke move. I don't know who made these decisions at EA, but what the hell? Like that that build this year has just made no sense. Like them them being tall should be the build, not the fact that they're who the hell is that? Not the fact that they're all so jukey. Like, make them able to go up and get the ball. Short went all the way at 31. He's a 75 overall. Hidden dev. No one's shocked. Speed's a little lower than I ever thought because he was like a 4.48, right? No ag either. Injury concerns. If he's only star, this is like an ultimate disappointment. Wow. From like certified goon to like, that is unfortunate. Some of these things that we have uncovered. Which, speaking of, I really kind of wish Koontz wasn't like... He didn't become such a good player in our uh, Bisons franchise because 
Man, with the draft coming up here, I really want a new tight end. Like, I love Koontz, but, uh, man, I would love a new tight end. Tight end is just so fun to develop. Wait a minute. Hold on. I don't remember seeing Ryan Ramchick in free agency. I don't remember it. Am I, like, I'm, Ronnie Stanley's there. I'm going to argue that Ronnie Stanley's a little bit higher of a commodity. But some of these other guys, you know, they, they fall down the list a little bit, so uh, I'm going to allow it. But, yeah, that's an improvement. Fisk. This is why I don't ever sign him or uh, draft him. Starts out at 23, and he just it's just a tough age to work on from, you know? But then you have uh, Oro Oro is here, and, uh, you know, he's the same kind of situation, just a year younger. All right, potentially the final season. I will admit, with Underwood playing or starting at a weird time, that it would make sense to do at least another year after that, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I want to see some progress from the team. It just feels like one of those rebuilds that, that kind of went by really quickly, but at the same time, you know, it, it has been many, many seasons, uh, and it's just, it really hasn't worked out. And the reason why we're not as high of an overall is that we're not really winning many playoff games, uh, and we're just inconsistent. But looking at the team, obviously there's some some pretty good players, obviously, and uh, we're hoping that uh, maybe this is our year. I doubt it, but it could be. 120 mil, Latu, Jesus, what is that number? 34, you know what? He is like one of the best players I have seen that isn't like a proven talent do well in a long time. I'm giving him the 35 per neighbors. Uh, he's been all right. He's, you know, he hasn't been Latu level good, but he's been all right. Uh, Gunner, why not? I mean, at this rate, these contracts are pretty fair. Oh, come on. I thought we were going to have the clean sweep. Lindstrom, maybe. Bergeron, probably not. Frank Ragnow, hell yes at that price. Hello? Uh, should accept a two-year 32. That's a lot less than we had to pay in the open market. Bennett is a backup. And then I don't know what... Oh, my God. The numbers are just like... There's like players showing up every second. Like how many players that need to be contracted? Uh, obviously, Ramchak, he'll probably retire. He won't even be worth the contract anyways. And then Lindstrom, I mean, I want to see him uh, retire a Falcon. So let's do a three-year deal worth, you know, 69. Oh, come on. Who doesn't love we had 69? I think we've had a great season. I don't know if it's going to be a uh, bye week level season. Oh, it is a bye week level season. 14 and 3. Didn't change the... Oh, actually, did change the defensive scheme. I changed the Baltimore scheme because I've, I've heard some things that uh, it's actually not bad. It is pretty good, and we used it once before, and it was actually really solid. So I'm going to stick it out with that. Um, but, of course, looking at the offensive scheme, the Falcon scheme. So, you know, it's it's the same offensive scheme, just the defense changed up a little bit. But let us take a look at the stats and awards, as we obviously uh, had a really good year. Underwood, 34 yards. Underwood, 34 touchdowns. Four quarterbacks on the roster as well. Uh, eight interceptions. That's not a bad pick. Touch on a pick ratio at all. Robinson was amazing yet again. Uh, the receiving all over the place. Pitts a ton of touchdowns, but man, I mean, this is a great season, but nobody got to a thousand yards receiving, which is really strange. Like, I don't understand how, but sure, I guess blocking was actually not bad at all. Looking at defensively, uh, Latu, you know, earning that contract. Rowe, seven and a half. Colson, six. Cheney, four and a half. Nixon, doing nothing. He's just doing nothing. Uh, AJ Terrell with three picks, two for Clark. Uh, one for three different other players. Kicking only missed one for Young Hui. Black just good enough with over 50 yards per punt. No kick return, punt return game. I don't know why Callaway's the guy, but I sure. Uh, Drake May, the MVP of the league with D Commanders. Uh, I do not see our quarterback. No, he does not exist. Uh, Robinson at number five. Defensive player of the year at number five for Latu as well. So five and five. Uh, did we start any? Oh, yeah, we started Cheney. Didn't get it, unfortunately, though. Uh, no breakout either, by the way. No breakout uh, all year. Uh, Underwood, number three, so pro bowler. Bijan at number uh, one for running back. Wide receiver was not on the list. Big surpriser there. And Lindstrom's uh, offensive lineman of the year again. Awesome. No for the D-line linebacker. Latu at number one. Colson at number five. And who was that at number seven? Kennard. Okay, maybe some dev ups there as well for Lucky. Uh, best DB at number 10. Best kicker at number two. So pretty damn good season. Uh, the offense is a little weird, though, I will say. Uh, you know, Bijan was amazing. He kind of carried. But the rest of the team, the, I don't know what's going on with that receiving. But Pitts with 16 touchdowns is pretty crazy. 14-3 and three versus 9-8 and eight is a division rival. But if we lose this game, all hell will break loose. 
But I suppose Tampa did have to win their first matchup to get here. So maybe, maybe it wouldn't be that crazy. We also missed our extra point on the touchdown. Uh, really good defensive battle so far, but offense, you got to step it up. 9-0, to 17-0, 24-0, 31-0, 34-0. Zero, and I was about to say, it's been a long time. Oh, my God, 31-3. to three. Scary. Um, it's been a long time since I have seen a shutout in the playoffs, and that will not happen here either as the Buccaneers sneak out three points. I'm not sure how in the fourth quarter. It was the fourth quarter, right? Wait, wait, hold on. They kicked a field goal with a minute left? That is just petty sad. Like, that's just petty sad. It's not petty mad, it's petty sad. Bacon threw a pick. Uh, Underwood, what the hell is going on? Like, how are we winning games with these abysmal passing numbers? I can't change it because, you know, we have a chance to win a Super Bowl with the scheme that we started with. You know, defensively, I probably didn't even need to change Baltimore because what really changed? Latio had a couple more sacks. Everyone else was the exact same. So nothing really changed switching to Baltimore. Uh, and then Colson never got a freaking dev up. Maybe he'll get one this year because he was, uh, you know, pretty high on the linebacker list. But where are my breakouts? We have way too many normal and star dev players to not have gotten a breakout. Like, forget about winning the breakout. I just mean in general. Like, how do we not get one to attempt? Oh, not Dallas. Are you kidding me? Our chance is potentially squandered by going against Dallas. Who do they beat? They beat the Niners. I don't know who they beat. Uh, and then they smoked the Rams. Yeah, that's going to be a GG. For them, of course, let's do this thing. Let us win. Let us win things. The Bills, 35-17. to 17. We know who's on their way to the Super Bowl. Now it's between us and the Cowboys. Anyone but the Cowboys, right? Which, in this case, would be us. So, yay, extra win. Uh, they already scored more points than the Buccaneers all of last game. 14-7. The defense is still showing up strong. I mean, they got all the way down. The oh, that's a huge touchdown before half. That could be the win. 10 points. 17. 38 to 14. 38 to 22. The Cowboys are trying to come back. They cannot do it. Of course, more successful on offense than the Buccaneers, but they still got absolutely railed and Underwood cooked. Dak and uh, Ben. Uh, ben Dunder. Uh, pretty close. Um, both put up a show passing. Bijan was him as usual. Uh, Markel Love, interesting name drop there, is their best wide receiver, apparently. Pitts, the touchdown master. Uh, three sacks from Parsons, one and a half for Nixon, half for Phillips, and one for Malik Miles. Is that Miles or Mills? I don't know. Jason Sanders missing a field goal. Probably didn't matter, but either way. We're moving on to the Super Bowl. The Cowboys can suck it, just like all the haters. I don't know how many haters this Falcons team has, but they all of them can suck it. I don't know what the quantity is, but all of you. Uh, deep accuracy is kind of low. Definitely need to work on that. I'm not saying that this team wasn't ready, but I am a little surprised that we're here now. Like, what's what really changed from last year to this year? Is Ryan Ramchek just that guy? I'm trying to think. Like, the team is getting better every single season because we don't really have anyone, like, regressing or retiring, but... I feel like we had, like, established veterans at different, like, DT positions before, and it wasn't good enough, and now somehow it is. I mean, I'm grateful for it. Why not? No dev up for Underwood. I thought he was just good enough, especially as a pro bowler, but I guess not. Colson still doesn't go up in dev. Cheney doesn't go up in dev. We had a zero dev up. So if we were to lose this game, it would basically be a nothing burger season. When you consider, like, the development. Yeah, we got up some overalls. Big whoop. God dang, he's so good. But, like, as far as, like, dev ups go, like, nothing happened. I don't I don't think. No, not a single one. That is kind of crazy. Uh, one more chance to look at our opponent and see how they fared. Uh, it's not really how I wanted to do it, but sure, why not? Raiders, Broncos. Okay, two very beatable teams. Didn't necessarily completely dominate them. If you were to be a betting person, you see the way we took care of the Cowboys and the teams they had to compete against and how they took care of their opponents, you would feel pretty strong about the Falcons winning, right? Hopefully. To the end of the game. Bills in a really good start here, 14-0. to We're climbing back and we get three. That is not good. Huge stop, another three. They don't get points before half, though. We get the touchdown, but no two-point. Defense is trying to keep us in it, but this offense is doing nothing. And they got a score here. You know, that was a long drive. Somehow held. And here you are up by five. Fourth and six. They're punting the ball. 
And the Falcons do the opposite of the Falcons, and they clutch up a game. The Falcons are Super Bowl champions by clutching up in a trailing position for the whole game and then locking down the Bills in the second half. They scored zero points. We won 22 to 14, barely. And zero of the points they gained were in the second half. That is an unbelievable showing by the Falcons. And I got to say, I know the scores might have been a little bit high at some times, but this is one of the better defenses we've seen on, like, not on paper, but just performance-wise. You know, it's not the best defense we've ever built. But some of the, like, the lockdowns they did. There was multiple drives in this game where, you know, the uh, the Bills went all the way down the field. And, man, that quarterback just looks uh, out of place. Like, it literally looks like somebody created a player, inserted them in, and they're like, look at me, I'm a Super Bowl-winning quarterback. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, they, they had multiple drives where they got all the way down the field and just didn't score. Um, Underwood, I mean, he had, a, he had a game where he was really good, but overall, kind of carried. Kind of carried. He got carried. Bijan was pretty good again. Receivers, I mean, they are kind of selling in fairness. QBs, uh, uh, sacks on the QB, and Oliver and Rousseau, uh, Russo, anyways, uh, none for us. Elam with a pick. They missed a field goal. That might have been the difference. And I'm a little shocked at how perfect that ended. I really am. You know, it's not like we went to the Chiefs scheme or the Cowboys scheme and just, you know, we saved it last season. We kept it with the Falcons the entirety. The entirety. And this is the only season where we didn't run the Falcons defense. Uh, and, I mean, really nothing changed. We, we played really well in the playoff series there, but nothing changed statistically. Basically the same, you know, Latu and all them. But either way, let's take a look at how the season or the team finished out. Uh, Drake London, feel like he was kind of quiet from this one. No dev ups, of course. 91 overall. Super poor man's Mike Evans. Of course, that's you know what I'm going to be calling him pretty much every time. Um, neighbors, didn't really develop that well himself. He's 25 years old, but... Only an 86 overall. No, sh no short route. Medium's iffy, but everything else is actually really good. And because he's fast, you don't hate that build. Rondale Moore, 86 overall. Kind of surprised me how good of an overall he is. Some good seasons in there, but, you know, for the most part, three, 400, 500 yards. Kind of expected. That's kind of what he does in real life. Uh, then we have Pitts, who's a 99 overall. We've seen Pitts how many different times, especially in our fantasy draft rebuilds. Usually we grab him because he's just so good and valuable. Uh, insane, obviously. Could be a wide receiver yet. Next, you put him at wide receiver, he drops like 10 plus overalls. It makes no sense to me, but maybe they just don't want. I don't know what they would want because him being a wide receiver actually drops his value. Him being a tight end is like impossible to guard, but him as a wide receiver, a little more possible. Uh, offensive line, I guess. We'll look at Bergeron and uh, Lindstrom because they're real life players. Uh, pass block, especially the finesse, not great. Base as well. And then we move over to Lindstrom, the 96 overall who is uh, very good at everything. Pass block finesse, also a little low, but 83 is obviously good enough to get the job done. Uh, do not want to move on to defense yet, because even though we just kind of looked at Underwood, I want to see him again. Pretty sure his um, medium and short was very good. And then, yeah, that deep accuracy, a little bit on the lower side. You'd want to see the throw on the run and throw under pressure a little better, but this guy's a franchise quarterback when you look at the, the things that you want. Ideal sense of pressure, throws the ball away, tight spiral, speedy enough. Great throw power. He's not a bad quarterback at all. He'd be actually pretty fun to use. Uh, and then Bijan Robinson, we almost forgot about. 26 years old. He's so good. 97 juke, 93 spin, 97 change of direction, 90 track, 86 dev arm, 93 speed, 94 excel. He's just ridiculous. Really, really good. Then we move on to the defensive side of the ball where Jesse Bates is a 99 overall. I think he wavered a little bit. No? I thought at one point he was a 98, and then he went back to 99. But either way, you know, just enough speed, very good zone, and very good man. Hit powers up there, pursuit, tackle, play wreck, awareness. His only downside is really his block shed, but he's not the biggest dude in the world. 6'1", but 200 pounds, so what can you really expect? Uh, and then we move on to the safety, the strong safety, Bullard, who's always been decent, but never, like, truly elite. What the hell did I just do? Truly elite for me in a rebuild, but 83 overall star, should be 25, 26 at best. So, uh, you know, still has some time. Very athletic. 84 zones, great. Uh, then we move on to the linebacking unit. We'll look at Latu after the rest. We'll go from left to right. Nixon really never had a great season for us, but, you know, 87 power move. Maybe the speed matters, perhaps. Uh, then we move over to uh, Mr. Kennard, who, uh, you know, 25 years old star. What can I say? 89 speed. 
not a bad player. That's all. That's all I know. And also, do we ever have to pay Colson? I feel like Colson would have needed a contract before Kennard. Or did we pay Colson? It was the wrong guy. I'm thinking of. Let's see the release. Oh, maybe it was Colson. Okay. I mean, either way. I mean, I wanted both of them to stay anyways. But 80 zone coverage, 85 block shot, great hit power. Tackles up there, athleticism, pursuit, everything's great. Even his man coverage is up there. His only real downside would be the catching, I suppose, and play rec's not the best. But overall, he's a really good player. Just never got that dev up. Did we look at Kennard? I can't remember. Did we? Oh, he's really good. Field general, right? Yep, that's always field general. He's actually really good. That balance of zone and block shit is crazy. Let's take a look at the rest of the defense. Linebacker, Latu, the 99 overall. Edge rusher actually played... Like a 99 overall, super athletic, amazing pursuit, amazing tackle, pretty good block shot, amazing finesse, literally the best you can get. Very good power move, amazing awareness. Even has 86 zone coverage, uh, you know, 83 play rack. He is a goon, an absolute goon. Looking at interior now, Gabe Kelly, he's going to be one of those players. Oh, maybe not. I was about to say, he's going to be one of those players like in the 90s for a lot of different things, but his overalls just drop because of awareness and play rack, which isn't necessarily wrong to see with that. Awareness being 70, but only 88 block shed is his like kind of max attribute. Not bad by any means, but not the best we've ever seen. Roe, the superstar, 88 overall. Very good block shed. You know, power moves good enough at 80. Super strong, smart. Uh, then we move on to the corners, the final kind of piece of this puzzle. We're going to start with Phillips, the Andrew Phillips, uh, who is a very good number three. He's a very good number three player. Thought maybe we would start him, but you know. Mr. Clark Phillips kind of took over. 87 overall on his way to 88. Good man coverage. Good press. Good catching. Good stuff. You know, decently athletic. And then the cream of the crop at corner for this team, A.J. Terrell. What is his rank in the entire league? Number two. 99 man, 98 zone, 99 press, 97 play rec. Very fast. I mean, basically a true 99. You know, 99 awareness on top of it. Some, some actual 99 overalls in there. He looks really, really good. Usually you have like... 99 man, 96, 97 zone, and you're kind of maxed out, but he damn near got a 99 man, 99 zone. Uh, and then I guess we'll look at Young Hui, but realistically, he's regressed at this point, so you're not going to really like what you see. He's good enough, but not like he's a 99 everything. Regardless of, if you guys enjoy this one, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate continued support on the channel a ton. Maybe uh, follow me on Twitter, Chumpy Care, second channel, Care plays for non matter content. But if you want to see a new team uh, that's, you know, we haven't rebuilt before, there's still a little bit of time before the NFL draft. We could probably get a couple more in before it's time to actually, you know, rebuild the real teams that they will have. Uh, you know, some of the teams will wait until after the draft is complete so we can have as realistic of a squad as possible. But other teams, when it's a big name, you know, if, like, you know, I always use an example, but it probably won't happen. Like Drake May at number one instead of, um, you know, Caleb Williams. Obviously, that's like a day one rebuild, even if, you know, Pick nine is, well, I guess to be fair, pick nine will come at the same time, if whether it's trade up or not, trade down, whatever. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll do that. And then this round two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever, it's unfortunate they'll be left out. But at the same time, it's just, it is what it is. Especially if one of those kind of high ones goes, it could be something I record like the moment it happens. So then I could literally, hopefully, upload that rebuild like, I don't know, within the same day. It's, it's kind of tough to do that. It would kind of be like a morning upload. But, Obviously, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because the draft's still kind of a little bit away. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comment section below what teams you'd like to see next. If you have challenge rebuild ideas. I've got a couple still in the uh, the old back pocket. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. Tomorrow, probably not an upload on the channel. But uh, Saturday, maybe speed rebuild with the Bison's offseason. And then potentially we'll do a light goal on that. Maybe do the preseason on Sunday with a rebuild. So, uh, you know, enough content to go around. Just not tomorrow here on the main channel. A lot of other videos maybe you didn't check out. So maybe check them out. Other anyways, though, enough ranting. Enough uh, yapping. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video. And enjoy your weekend. See ya!